Hello everyone, um, I'm George from Ireland, so here are my, my British Poesy channel, and I'm going to read a, um, a poem by one of the most marvellous poets from the British Isles, though he's not primarily remembered as a poet, and that's Oscar Wilde. So I visited the, the locale for this poem only, um, well, not quite a fortnight ago. Um, so this is a sonnet written to a very particular format, 14 lines long, has to have certain scansion and so forth. Um, so this is after his release from prison. Um, he travelled to Rome. He resumed his uh, romantic relationship with Bosi. That's Lord Alfred Douglas. Anyway, here it goes. The Grave of Keats by Oscar Wilde. Rid of the world's injustice and his pain, he rests at last beneath God's veil of blue, taken from life when life and love were new. The youngest of martyrs here is lain, fair as Sebastian and as early slain. No cypress shades his grave, no funeral yew, but gentle violets, weeping with the dew, weave on his bones an everlasting, an ever-blossoming chain. O oh, proudest heart that broke for misery, O oh, sweetest lips since those of Mytilene, O oh, poet-painter of our English land, thy name is writ in water, and it shall stand, and tears like mine shall keep thy memory green, as Isabella did her basil tree. Rome. So that is his um, poem, and uh, he composed this only about two years before his own death at the age of 46, uh, whereas um, John Keats was called to his reward at the age of a quarter century. Um, anyway, so I'll just analyse it very amateurishly and uh, very briefly. So casting a cursory eye over it, rid of the world's injustice, well, he was assailed by, by some in, this, in, in the Tory press. And, um, well, he wasn't primarily concerned with politics, but uh, most of his friends were, were, were radicali. So presumably he would have been exposed to the notion that um, the uh, status quo w w was grossly inequitable, which it was at that time. He died in 1821, that February. Um, and his pain, rid of the world's injustice and his pain, and indeed he did pass the last few months of his life in um, indescribable agony caused by consumption or tuberculosis, coughing up blood. He probably contracted this disease from living in damp garrets. That was all he could afford as a penniless versifier. Um, taken from life when life and love were new. Well, I was relatively young. He was um, uh, corresponding with uh, his uh, paramour, Fanny Brown. They never wed. Um, fair as Sebastian, as in the Christian martyr, and as early slain. So he died quite young. But... Um, uh, Oscar Wilde is suggesting this guy was more or less killed. This is meant to be somewhat allegorical, I suppose, because Oscar Wilde was, was um, uh, prosecuted, um, and but that was for something that was against the law at the time, whereas Keats was never prosecuted for anything. Um, but uh, the same sorts of people would be would have been against both, though Keats was straight. Nobody had any beef with his sexuality. No Cypress shades his grave. Cypress, C-Y-P-R-E-S, is a type of tree, and it's, it's for making coffins out of, like, one of one of Shakespeare's songs in Twelfth Night is Come away, come away, death, let me in Cyprus be laid, as in a coffin fashioned from Cyprus. And it's pronounced precisely like um, the island of Cyprus. And I wonder if Cyprus trees originally come from there. Um, no funeral you, Y-E-W, as in the type of tree, but gentle violets blooming uh, with the dew. Now, um, I have been to his grave, and I, I didn't observe the uh, horticulture quite so closely as he did. And even if those plants were there when he visited something like 1898, that doesn't say that doesn't prove that they're necessarily there still. Weave on his bones an ever blossoming chain. And uh, it's um, a heartwarming image, the way that life can spring from death. And I, I do this myself and think, well, at least the grass I'm touching, this is nourished with his uh, precious bones. And somehow I can commune with him because he died 
about 160 years before my birth, and yet still I would like to connect him. If only I could reach out and touch him, if I could communicate with him, if he could speak back to me, somehow have some numinous contact with him. Um, anyway, because, well, poetry, most writing for someone like me is an attempt to escape uh, mortality. Uh, to some degree, that was the case with, with um, uh, John Keats as well. Um, but uh, writing... Uh, Ominously, I think I should be remembered amongst the English poets after my death, which was quite a boast to write that at the time. And indeed, he was correct. Um, uh, he was um, uh, not that well known in his lifetime, though. Oh, proudest heart that broke for misery. Well, he did have a suffering. Oh, sweetest lips since those of Mytilene, a classical illusion, because um, he was a classical scholar, of course, Oscar Wilde. And um, Keats decided the classics not as much as the others. He hadn't been to one of the top schools. He didn't go near a university. Of course, very, very few people did. He, he qualified as an apothecary, which is like a pharmacist. But that wasn't his university as such. Hospitals taught that. So he was a man of many parts, a man of attainments, a Renaissance man. So gifted in sciences as well as in the humanities. O poet painter of our English land. Because as a romantic, he was fixated with um, limbing the uh, simple splendour of nature of our English land, notably as an Irishman who's writing this. So perhaps he's using England as a synecdoche for the British Isles as a whole. Or as he, you know, Keats was English, Wilde was not. But our English land, because I suppose Keats is English land, um, even though our English land is not quite accurate for, for Wilde. But, you know, since the age of 21, he spent all his life in England. So we, we can't be too uh, pedantic about who's from Ireland, who's from England. Thy name was written water because that, that was there was one stipulation that laid out about his headstone is it must bear these words here lies one whose name is writ in water have you noticed how it's got um, a meter to it here lies one whose name is writ in water even there he uh, insisted on on um having a scansion to it and is it like waves as well was he that clever or am i just falsely attributing something to him maybe maybe all meters like that it shall stand, and tears like mine will keep thy memory green. Green as in fresh. It's not going to fade away. Nobody shall ever forget him. And why? Because the tears will, will water the uh, plants there, perhaps, as Isabella did her basil tree. And then, and then after the 14 lines is Rome, because he composed it at Rome. I'm not sure if he literally composed it uh, there at the gravesite, but um, he certainly visited the gravesite, as I did so myself. Um, so that's um, just my uh, penny's worth. So please follow me on Twitter and Instagram and Facebook. Check out my other channels, English Law and indeed George from Ireland Reflections. Toodaloo.